Hello and welcome to tutorial 161 and this tutorial talks about the global dictionary and in particular sharing information between two charts and between a chart, another chart and radar screen and it follows from tutorial 160 which used the uh, the dictionary the much of the syntax is the same as you'll see but what we're going to do is start with a very simple case and that is when we have compatibility mode switched on and we're sharing between two charts so let me first of all just show you quickly how we do the uh, compatibility mode if you're not familiar with that so you probably just went perhaps a little too quickly there. So you have file, uh, file preferences, uh, trade sta station desktop, and then in the uh, the property, the preferences, we look for the performance tab and we can select compatibility there. Let's look at each program in turn. Now, what I've actually done, this program is going to suffice for the more complicated case as well as the simpler case. So we're going to be commenting out various information and then uncommenting it so, so it applies. So just ignore for the moment the uh, the stuff that is uh, is commented out. We're going to be using a, a dictionary, which I've called avdict. We're going to be using a vector, which I've called avvect. What we're going to do in a one this is the send statement by the way perhaps i should just show you what we're actually going to be doing what i've done as a simple example is we calculated some moving averages four moving averages in the sending program and then we're going to be sharing that information with the receiving program so you can see here we've got a, a pound dollar and here we've got a, a euro dollar and we're sharing the the pound dollar averages between the two charts. Let's just go back to the sending program. This is where we create the global dictionary and you'll notice that the syntax we use, we've just got the uh, the brackets with nothing between them and uh, we'll see a more complicated case of this later on. And then um, we're uh, storing the information about the moving averages in a vector, which is avvect creating a new instance here and then we're going to be push pushing back the information for the moving averages which are just simply the 17 14 21 28 period moving averages now you'll notice that this is just in the general program so what's going to happen for each bar of the sending chart we're going to create a new vector and then we're going to store information in it and as the uh, as the chart develops as that bar develops that information is going to be continually updated and put into the vector and then uh, stored in the dictionary so the uh, the dictionary uh, the, uh, the syntax is the name of the dictionary dot items and then the key and the key we're going to be using is going to be date plus time divided by 10,000 to four decimal places and we're converting that to a string. So that will mean that uh, with the specific bar we're using, which is 10 minute, we're going to have a different key for each one of those bars. And then we're storing into that the average vector which is where we've stored these averages now you might think well hang on um, there there may not be an item with that key in fact there won't be when we first start a new bar but what this does if there is one there already it updates it if there isn't one it creates it so that's quite a useful little feature of the global dictionary and then we're just simply plotting the values just uh, as you would normally know that's the the sending program in this simple case the receiving program is also quite similar what we're doing we're putting in the variables the name of the uh, dictionary and the vector some of the others we're not using for the moment um, and then i've created a little uh, method here just to make this uh, read a little bit better but what i've said is uh, if the dictionary contains a uh, key which corresponds to the, the 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 bar on the receiving chart then what we do is we store into a, a vector have effect the value that that is stored in the dictionary with this as the key and then we can just simply get the values out of that vector using uh, have vect 0 1 2 3 which gives us the four values and 
plot those on the chart. In terms of setup on a one statement, we uh, create the global dictionary and we create a vector. And then what we're doing on each tick of the receiving chart, we're running the method check key. Just to remind you, check key, again, that is this, uh, this method here where we're looking into the dictionary for the current bar or for a key corresponding to the current bar. And uh, if there is a value, we're taking the vector out of that value or we're reading the, va the, uh, the vector value in the dictionary and then we're plotting the individual values in the receiving chart. So that is the, uh, the simplest case. We're now going to move on to slightly more complex cases. So what I want to do is change things so that we can share the information, not just to another chart, but also to radar screen. And I also want to set the settings, the preferences to um, use the uh, multi-core. So first of all, we'll do that. We'll just go to preferences. I'm going to set this to auto configured. We're now going to make some changes to the programs and we'll start with the sending program. Now, the code that we need to use if we want to be able to share the information across multi-cores or between different types of uh, window is we need to use the following, global dictionary create, and then in the brackets, true, and then a share name. So I'm just gonna copy that into the sending program and I'm gonna do the same in the receiving program. So we're going to change that to the same, exactly the same syntax. So I'm just going to verify those just to make sure that we keep that information. So um, just a very small change that should now share the information across the, the chart and the radar screen. Now, uh, one thing that we need to be careful of this is that the radar screen is local time. So what I've done is changed or made sure that the charts are also local time. So let's just uh, wait for that to update. And you'll see now we're getting the information also in radar screen. Now you'll notice that uh, we're not seeing anything in the chart except the updated values updating now. That is because we don't really have any control as to do we store the information in the dictionary before we read it or do we try and read it before it's stored, etc. So if I were to press Control R now, then you'll see that the information is actually there and that will continue being updated. Now we might want to actually be a little bit more proactive. So what we could do, just going to... Uh, go to the sending program and there's a little bit of code here which I'm going to uncomment and what this does is on the last bar of the chart in other words as the sending chart is updating going through all those bars storing the data and the uh, and the keys for each bar is I'm going to run a little root routine when we finally get to the last bar on the chart and we're going to do a one statement and we're going to print the information then we're going to add something to the dictionary we're going to create another little key called recalc and i'm going to set that to be one so in other words this will be added to the dictionary a key called uh, recalc and a value one on the last bar of the chart and that's just going to happen once in the receive we're also going to be um, creating a, an update event for the dictionary using this syntax and that is already created here. So uh, when, when that fires, then we're going to be running the check key, but also check key being, being the, uh, the method that goes through and uh, checks for the a value for the specific bar and then plots the values. But uh, what we're also going to be doing is running this little section here. So this is going to be checking every tick when the, uh, the chart is live, but we're going to say if the, uh, if the, this item recalc is one, then we're going to do two things. We're going to set the value to zero and we're then going to, uh, print some information. Then we're going to throw a recalculation 
exception and uh, that will uh, effectively recalculate the receiving chart and so we'll see the information printed. I'm not sure that we're going to see any change of information now because the information is already loaded. What I'll perhaps do at the end is demonstrate that in a little more detail. So the third main thing that I want to demonstrate is if we don't use a vector then how we could send that information and retrieve the information just using a comma separated value list. We can do that. That's uh, quite uh, straightforward. So I'm just going to comment out my uh, vector approach here. And I'm going to uncomment my comma del delimited list way of doing things. And what we're doing in the sending program is we're creating a text string. I've kept it quite simple. What I'm literally doing is putting a string containing the seven period moving average to a certain number of decimal places in a string plus a comma plus the 14 period moving average plus a comma, etc., etc. So that is being stored in a text string. And then when we add it to the dictionary, we are using exactly the same key as before, but instead of using the vector, we're using the text as string. Now on the receiving program, it's going to modify that as well. A little bit more complicated, but not much. So we're not going to use the, the vector approach. I'm just going to comment out that. And going to uncomment my comma delimited list approach. So uh, we can read the text from the dictionary a little bit like we read the vector. So this time we're storing the text into a string called txt. And then what we're doing is we are storing that text in a token list. So you'll see up here we've got a token list in the variables and here we're storing the text in the token list. Now why would we do that? Well the, the nice thing about the, the token list is it sort of automatically processes a comma delimited list. So we can then simply do the plot using the syntax t list 0, 1, 2, 3 etc like I have done here and let's just see if we did anything else no I don't think so so I'm just going to verify these let's make sure we haven't commented out anything we shouldn't have done and make sure that oops I mean verify that okay it doesn't like that curly bracket there okay so I'm going to go back to the chart and the sender program is no longer applied because it had an error. Let's just try and reset that to status on and see if we still get the error. So you can probably see uh, the deliberate mistake here. And uh, what I'm trying to do is effectively add a uh, value with the same key whereas the program goes round and round and round. Running is going to try and restore something with the same key using the syntax. That's not that's not permissible. What we actually need to do is use the same syntax that we used for the uh, the array part of the program. So I'm just going to copy this here, and then we can just modify it to fit the, uh, the this different way of doing things. So I'm going to place that there. And we want to say text as type string instead of have effect as type vector, like so. So I'm going to get rid of that add statement. And I uh, think that should be okay now. So let's just uh, rerun the program. Change the status to on. Uh, 
Okay, and you can see that uh, that's now working without error. You can also see in the print statement that uh, we did get the recalculation error exception create thrown, and um, that was uh, in relation to the little bit of code that we put in there to tell the receiving when the sending chart had loaded the information and uh, asking it to refresh itself and hence replot all the information. You can also see that the the values are being uh, reflected in the radar screen. And uh, you probably may have noticed here, I've got a couple of symbols and I'm sharing the same information, that that information is different. And the reason for that is the uh, the IBM time signature is not the uh, the current time signature, not the same bar as the, uh, the Forex uh, symbols. And hence we're getting a value from from previously. So just before I go, you probably notice that um, there is a little bit of difference in the shape of the uh, this chart and this chart. In other words, some of the information, some of the accuracy is not getting through. And the reason for that is because in the sending program using the comma approach, I've got this set up as the average and been stored as a string to four decimal places. So what I'm going to do, I'm just change that to six decimal places, which is probably uh, more uh, realistic for Forex. And I'm just going to then refresh the sending program, not making any changes to the receiving program. And uh, let's just watch the chart refresh. And you'll see now that those uh, that looks a lot more like the uh, chart. And if we were just to do a quick sample, uh, for example, there, um, one o oh, three uh, plot one is one three o oh, five o oh, o oh, three, and if we do the same on this chart, you'll see it's one, one, the uh, same one o oh, one point three o oh, five zero zero three. So again, uh, if uh, you like this material, please join the Markplex email list and please subscribe to this YouTube channel. And uh, of course, if you like this video, please like it. Thank you very much.